Hello viewers, 4 DIYers here, back with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to remove the salt stains from carpet in your vehicle. This is a video I have done in the past. I'm just redoing it as it's a better quality compared to the previous one I did. Don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. Be sure to check out my other social media pages such as Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Over the winter season, slush and snow can be dragged into your vehicle by your shoes. Salt can be present in the slush or snow. Once this eventually melts and dries, salt crystals will be left on your carpet. Having rubber stuff floor mats will help prevent this to some extent as long as there is an excessive amount of water present. First start by vacuuming any loose debris and salt crystals in the carpet. If you wish, you can also use a soft carpet brush to loosen up some of those salt crystals which will help a little with the cleaning process. Next we are required to have a spray bottle which is filled with warm water and white vinegar mix. Having the mixture slightly warm will help soften up the salt crystals, eventually making them easier to remove. Personally, I just like to use hot tap water and then mix in the vinegar that is room temperature. If you wish, you can warm up the mixture in the microwave or on the stove, but not to an excessive amount as it must be a safe temperature for the spray bottle. If you are using a microwave to warm up the mixture, ensure that you are using a microwave safe cup and not the spray bottle. As for the mix, I find that most stains you can use an equal one to one mix of water and white vinegar. Considering the stain is quite severe in this scenario, I'll be using three parts white vinegar and one part water. The vinegar will not damage the carpet, but if you are a little hesitant, then try it on a hidden area to ensure it doesn't damage the coloring of the material. Spray the mixture onto the stains and allow it to soak in for about five minutes. Use a soft bristle carpet brush to agitate the surface then. If you are using a harder bristle brush, you do risk the chance of damaging the carpet fibers. Agitate the surface in different directions to help break up the stain and working it in between the carpet fibers. Using a wet dry vacuum, remove any loose debris and moisture from the surface. Again apply more water and vinegar mix if needed to the carpet. Wait a few minutes for it to soak into the surface and repeat the steps. Only use a wet dry compatible vacuum as it's able to withstand any moisture and water being removed. Do not use a regular vacuum as you do risk damaging it otherwise. It is also a good idea to have a bucket of water handy to continuously rinse off the brush as this will prevent any contaminants of the salt in other areas. Finally, you should have something like this when you're done. As you can see, the salt stains have been completely removed. Here you now have a couple choices. We can leave it as is, allow it to dry, and we'll be left with an odor of vinegar for a few days. Or we can follow up with a carpet shampoo which will remove a majority of the vinegar odor and also help clean the rest of the floor area where we didn't have any salt stains. For this, I'll be following up with a shampoo so you're able to see the full procedure. Here I'm using a carpet shampoo made by Resolve. Ensure the area has been well vacuumed, removing any excessive moisture and debris. Then spray the carpet with the shampoo, allow it to soak in again for a few minutes. Use a soft bristle carpet brush. I'll be using the same one as previously, which I have washed to remove any vinegar or salt residue. Agitate the surface, working it in a couple different directions in between the carpet fibers. I have already replaced the old dirty water. It's a good practice to use hot water from a tap as it does help break down any other stains or dirt in the carpet. Once satisfied, then thoroughly vacuum the carpet, removing any exposed debris and moisture. Then allow it to dry. Dry times will be dependent on how well you vacuum the carpet or how much water was applied. Normally it does help leaving the vehicle in the sun with either the windows down or the doors open. If you do leave the doors open, be sure that the dome light isn't left on in the interior as you do risk draining the battery. Turn the dome light off manually, remove the fuse, or disconnect the battery. When disconnecting the battery, if your radio is equipped with a security code, be sure you have that code, otherwise you will risk having a problem afterwards. If you do leave your windows or doors open, just be sure the neighbor's pets don't wander into your vehicle. A couple of viewers in the past have said they did have problems with that, which resulted in the cat leaving a mess in the interior. Once done, you should be left with a final product like this. For this vehicle, it did take about 24 hours for the carpet to completely dry, and in that time span, do not install the floor mats. The floor mats will not allow the moisture to evaporate as it will be trapped underneath. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and give my video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.